Welcome uh, to this week's program of Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. Today, our guests are Ryan Berman and Michelle Hecht of the Jewish Family and Children's Services of uh, San Francisco. And our program will be Autism, Dating, and Social Relations. Um, before we begin, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Will Burnick. Hi, I'm... Hi, I'm Will Burnick, the, the, the Keith's co-host of Life on the Autism Spectrum. And Will, I know you always wear a special t-shirt. What's it with it this week? I'm glad you asked. This step, for this episode, I'm wearing my Best Buddies shirt. For the past couple of months, Best Buddies have had at least one, have had one event on the, second Sunday, on the second Saturday of every month. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, I know that Best Buddies has been a very closely affiliated organization with the Center for a very long time, and we really support what they do. Will, would you like to begin with some questions for our guests? Can you tell us about your background and, and, your, and your work with, with students on the spectrum? Thank you, Will, and thank you so much, Ascend, for giving us the opportunity to uh, join you today. <clears throat> My experience with autism actually began probably in 2007. I was working at an alternative elementary school in Portland, Oregon, and um, the principal asked me if I wanted to check out the life skills classroom, and I had no idea what that was going to entail. Um, I walked in and individuals were doing some unique behaviors I had never seen before, and I was really curious. And there was this young man in the corner and I saw him and I asked, you know, what, what's he doing? And they said, we don't know. This is what he does all day. He doesn't speak. And so I observed him for a second and he was doing this. And I thought about it and I approached him and I said, I'd like to buy a vowel. And he said, what vowel? And I said, E. And he goes, there are three E's. So he was doing the Wheel of Fortune um, spinner. And ever since that, you know, as soon as that happened, I really honed in and I said, I love, love this population. You know, I want to learn the reasons for these behaviors and how it helps people communicate. So fast forward, um, I got my master's in social work and I've uh, worked for an organization in Los Angeles um, for 10 years and it was called The Miracle Project, and they did expressive and performing arts for individuals with, uh, of all abilities. So we would create original musicals, we would teach um, social skills through improvisation by rehearsing for life. And through that opportunity and my experience, I've had the privilege of uh, presenting both nationally, internationally on best practices, as well as a amazing opportunity to present at the United Nations on World Autism Day, um, twice. And so this journey has just been fantastic. And um, when I was introduced to Jewish Family and Children's Services, I knew this was the right position for me. So that's, that's uh, my journey in a nutshell. Michelle, can you tell us about your background and, and your work with students on the spectrum? Sure, I'd love to, Will. Thanks, um, thanks so much for inviting me to join you at Ascend this morning. Um, you know, I was listening to what Ryan said, and he used the word curious, and that came up for me also. I, I'm a naturally curious person, and curiosity shows up for me um, in my interest to work, um, to, to be with people of unique qualities. Um, I think of myself as somebody that I just pick up friends um, throughout my life who are a real broad spectrum of, of humanity. They're all very, very different, um, the people I know and the people I enjoy being with. And I think maybe that's what draws me into work with people on the autism spectrum. Um, I also feel incredibly compassionate towards people um, who've been excluded in one way or another or who are struggling um, because of their differences and their disabilities. Um, I so badly want people to fully live and thrive. And if I can help um, people to do that, that's the ultimate job for me. So when I was in college, I was studying psychology and then I went on to, um, to work in special education and to get a degree in educational psychology. And for the longest time, um, working in schools was just a perfect match for me. 
And then as I got more experience and I got older and my children, my own children also got older and they were graduating from school, I became interested in working um, with adults and I, um, I got more training in behavior analysis and also in something called acceptance and commitment therapy and, um, and began expanding my practice with adults. And um, that's just been a, a marvelous direction for me. And now I work primarily with adults. I've been working with the Jewish Family and Children's Services for about seven years and for the other agencies in the Bay Area um, that are supporting adults um, with developmental disabilities and adults on the spectrum. And so that's a bit about me. Thank you very much, uh, Will and Michelle. Um, now our uh, cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy, will have a few questions for our guests. Thank you, Keith. Um, yeah, I would like you to tell us about what led you to the start, um, to start the new speed dating program and any other social relations initiatives. Thank you so much, Stacy. Mm -hmm. So in my work, um, a recurring theme that I have found is um, the desire for individuals of all abilities on the spectrum, neurodiverse, neurotypical, everybody desires connection. And people want to find love and a companion and somebody to spend, you know, life's many experiences with. And um, as I've worked with different people in different locations, this continuously came up. And so I've always wanted to put together a program like this. And as the director of disability services at Jewish Family and Children's Services, they supported this uh, program fully and said, why don't you go for it? And so I really wanted to create a, an environment where people can be themselves, put their best foot forward and be recognized exactly for who they are, but just giving some additional skills um, in being able to be more social, how to initiate balanced conversation. And so these are all things that I've noticed over time and individuals on the spectrum have said, you know, I really want a boyfriend. I really want a girlfriend. And, you know, I've tried and it just doesn't seem to be matching up. And I really want these tools. And so, um, you know, the individuals also at JFCS in our social club were expressing this desire. And, um, and so we wanted to provide an avenue and a service to answer, um, to answer the call. You know, when Ryan, um, when he told me about this program, this idea he was having and getting started with this program, I was so excited to, um, to help out and, and be on board with this. Um, Autistic persons are, are so unique in their talents and their passions and their dreams and their challenges. And they also share a common humanity with everyone. And I feel like in all of my work, there's that, that balance, right? Everybody is unique and everybody wants to be unique and be, um, be treated with respect and dignity in their unique abilities and differences. And everyone also wants to be part of humanity, wants, wants to celebrate their shared humanity. And I think part of that humanity is what Ryan said is that connection and, um, and, and the, the need for intimacy, right? And I think we're always, everyone's always juggling both of those things. And then last summer, my daughter, my daughter is 23. So she's in the dating scene and we were watching this program of on the spectrum and um, neither of us is autistic, um, but a big takeaway for both of us was, wow, the experiences people are having on this show are, are just what everyone is experiencing. Everyone wants this, has this need, everyone has this desire for intimacy and everyone's also nervous and everyone's also worried. Am I gonna be liked? Am I gonna find love? Um, will I find the right person? Will I find the right match? Um, and then of course the compassion starts flowing out of me and it's like, I wanna, I wanna help with that, that issue. Um, and, yeah, so so I, I was very excited um, to hear Ryan, um, you know, get get this program going. It was so so exciting, and I also see in the Shupin Social Club, which I am um, so blessed to be a part of, that you know we meet twice a week, and I can see in the club how people's connections have really blossomed during the pandemic, and um, and the need to go further. You know, people's desire to connect even even more closely beyond what we've created with through the social club. I understand that your 
starting a new speed dating program. Could you tell us more about that? Thank you so much, Jennifer. So what we are launching is a program called Special Connections, and we're helping individuals of all abilities navigate the dating world, which is so complex um, and very challenging for anyone to step into. A um, lot of different skills are needed. And so what we're doing is we're starting off with two individual coaching sessions. And in those coaching sessions, there will be mock dates um, and there will be feedback and education. And what we're really trying to do is assist each person to show who they are, to show what they're passionate about and learn how to connect with others to share that passion and continue the conversation. And so some of the core issues we're gonna be working on is balancing conversation equally, initiating conversation, active listening, and um, really being able to connect on um, a different level. And so after these two individual coaching sessions, there's a speed dating event. And so what we're doing is we're pairing 10 cisgendered heterosexual individuals, um, male with 10 cisgendered heterosexual females between the ages of 25 and 35. And um, of course that excludes an entire population. And so, <laughs> <Yes>. this, <laughs> and so what we're doing is we're gonna have different workshops. So this one is for cisgendered heterosexual heterosexual individuals 25 to 35. We're going to be doing different age groups. We're going to be doing different gender identities, different um, uh, sexual identities as well. And so it is a program for everyone. We really encourage, even if you don't meet the demographics for this first workshop, we encourage you to apply now so we know where the interest is for our next uh, workshop. So following the speed dating event where everybody has that opportunity to meet somebody new, um, have those conversations and see if there's a connection, there is a follow-up debrief um, individual coaching session where we go over next steps and get um, a conversation going with the coach about how did things go um, and uh, with the speed dating, what the individuals are going to do is mark off who they felt they developed and uh, established a connection with and who they'd like to continue that conversation with. Um, while we're holding the speed dating, we want people to make those uh, connections. The goal is not to you know, get a boyfriend, get a girlfriend immediately. We're just helping navigate that dating process. And so um, another, um, another thing we're including is we're giving safe practices for after the um, program, as well as best tips for creating online dating um, profiles, because those are challenging to create um, for everybody. I definitely had uh, significant assistance with creating mine when I was single and looking for um, love. And so we're really trying to make a, core, um, a comprehensive program that helps individuals with disabilities navigate the dating world. Yeah, I think Ryan um, gave such a, a comprehensive description of the program. I think, um, let's see, well, some, some additional aspects is um, speed dating is different from other types of dating. And I it's occurred to me that speed dating, um, while it can sound a little intimidating with this speed idea, it's actually, it has some strong selling points in that, um, it's very brief and it's very structured. And, um, and so it, we, we will be giving people um, supports, uh, possibly some you know, prompt questions or some mini scripts or things like that and some images to help them um, in those short conversations, but they are short. And for some persons on the spectrum who might be intimidated by the idea of meeting someone new um, having a conversation with somebody new, speed dating might actually be an ideal platform, you know, and virtual speed dating might be an even more ideal platform because I know many of the people I know who are autistic enjoy um, the online, uh, like uh, this kind of a, a connection, especially initially, because 
Um, sometimes meeting somebody in person can cause some emotional dysregulation, right? It can cause us to feel nervous. It can cause us to have those butterflies in our stomach. And for some persons, it can be almost too overwhelming to be able to allow yourself to shine. And so sometimes the online platform is, you know, takes the edge off that in-person connection. And it's not the same as a relationship in person, but it's a nice avenue for starting to meet somebody. So speed dating um, might really be a wonderful way for someone who's autistic, who is nervous meeting people in, in person to actually, you know, get their, get their toes wet as the expression goes and, and get a little taste of what dating might be like, especially those first few minutes. Um, and it gives you practice with many different people. So you will have many different meet dates, mini dates, um, essentially about five minutes long with, you know, more than five people, you know, in an hour. And um, that can be really great practice because the truth is um, most people have to date many different people before they find somebody they think is a match. And so it requires a little perseverance. And so speed dating can sort of help you through that. Will, I understand you have some additional questions. Yes, I do. Ryan, would you encourage speed dating to students, to students with other disabilities besides autism? Bill, I would certainly include individuals of all abilities, all disabilities to participate in this program. Um, there are some myths about autism, such as individuals on the spectrum don't want to be social. Uh, they don't want to build connection with others. And what I've found by talking with self-advocates and just in my work, that that is just not true. It might be more challenging for individuals on the spectrum and of other disabilities to make those connections, but there is that desire, there is that drive, as Michelle was saying, for intimacy to build those relationships. Um, one of the other ways we're going to be addressing this is we're gonna be holding singles mixers in between our special connections workshops. And so that's an opportunity for individuals who weren't selected for this particular workshop to also be able to um, practice the, these skills. And there will be structured activities to help facilitate. So we won't just be sending people into a room and saying, go for it, connect. Um, we're going to be doing uh, different exercises, activities so that they have that support and can um, try to make those connections. Michelle and Ryan, uh, you've gone into a great detail about how uh, the program makes it easy and uh, minimally stress-free for the participants involved. Uh, what I wanted to ask you though is, um, if any of the participants are like my adult children, uh, some of them are really, really shy and reluctant to get involved in something like this. So how do you help folks like this? How do you sort of uh, coax that? How do you help the wallflowers to grow as it were? It's a great question. Um, I think first, first, I think it's important that um, we all understand that um, shy people also crave connection and intimacy. Right, and it can be especially difficult, but just because they're shy doesn't mean they, they don't want it, even though sometimes it's their behavior might suggest that um, they're moving away from the experience. Um, I think um, in as part of the Special Connections program, we have an intake form that people complete, and it gives us information about how people experience meeting other people, right? What is their experience? And one of the things about special connection that's, I think, unique to all of our programs at JFCS is that we focus very much on the individual. So while spe special connections is a program that we're developing and there will be elements of you know, the program that we share with all of the participants, um, each participant is gonna work individually with a coach. And that coach is gonna begin with that intake and the information that that person has shared with us, including, are they shy? And if somebody's shy, we wanna find out, um, you know, how does that present? How does that present in their physiology? You know, sometimes when people are shy, it translates to feeling a little nervous. Other times when people are shy, it translates into a full blown panic attack. And so we need to, um, you know, meet people where they're at and understand how that's um, working or not working for them and find out um, what it is they want from the program, right? And help them to um, find that inner strength and that, um, 
like their power pose, if you will, <laughs> you know, to if, if they really do want to make those intimate connections, you know, they'll find it within themselves to overcome a little bit of that shyness. And we can also teach strategies to help people regulate so that the shyness doesn't translate into feeling over. Overwhelmed. So part of the coaching session will be focusing on that if, if people are having a lot of uh, physical dysregulation because of meeting other people, we can work on, on that through um, strategies to help you physically regulate and also to manage your thinking. I know that we all can get really bogged down in our worries and fears and that can be um, sometimes especially true or especially difficult for persons on the spectrum who might... Um, have um, you know repeated worries and fears and the repetition can be, become a, a sort of a hook. And um, so we work with people about the things that they're thinking. And one of the most common things that we hope to sort of manage for people is that you're gonna meet the love of your life on your very first speed date. Like it could happen, but the chances are really, 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 really small. And the idea of this is to get to know a lot of people and start to understand who you like and what you like. And if you let go of that idea that you're going to meet the love of your life, <laughs> then that initial meeting might not feel so overwhelming. It might not feel so low. It's like, oh, it's just a speed date. So, so we have a bunch of strategies to help people through that, that uh, shyness. Excellent. That's really encouraging. And if uh, some of our Bay Area viewers are interested in signing up for the program, how can they best do that? Great. So um, interested people can go to our website. Um, I believe we're going to put it in the chat, but it's jfcs.org backslash special connections. And there's an application on there and there is a long FAQ section. We tried to answer any questions that we've received as well as questions we haven't received just to put out as much information as possible. This sounds wonderful, uh, Ryan and Michelle. Uh, how can people find more about uh, Schupen House and Gary's Place in particular? Great question. So on our website, jfcs.org, there um, there's an area and uh, easily accessible, it says help people with disabilities. And through that, it gives links and information to all of our uh, programs. There's a tour of Gary's Place on there. It's a 6,000 square foot, large, um, large, very modern building. And that's gonna be for six young men with disabilities. We'll now turn over to our uh, book correspondent, Jennifer Brooks, for this week's commentary and review. Yes, thank you, Keith. Hello, everyone. I am Jennifer Brooks. I am the book reviewer for Life on the Autism Spectrum. This is the latest installment in my continuing series discussing books about the subject of autism and music. Music is a very important part of our lives, whether we are on the spectrum or not. And this book is called Kids, Music, and Autism, Bringing Out the Music in Your Child. It refutes the idea that people on the autism spectrum are not very musical saying that children with autism can be taught to be musical, just like all children can be taught to be musical. And not only can all children be taught to be musical, all children should be taught to be musical. She makes a very strong argument for including music education in the schools. Some of the benefits would be Cognition and mental focus, task attention, and stick to it ifness, auditory and visual coordination, tracking, sequencing, eye hand coordination, extended visual, auditory, mental attention, sequential memory and recall, bilateral arm, hand, and fine motor coordination, abstract information processing and creative thinking, anticipation and planning ahead, rhythm embodiment yielding systemic organization, self-discipline and self-awareness, accomplishment and self-esteem. And finally, most importantly for uh, children on the autism spectrum, socialization skills, 
in group music making. Also some of her arguments, a diagnosis does not preempt ability or skill. You know, there is a wide variation in natural talents. Some people are on the autism spectrum are very highly musical ta musically talented, others are not. The same is true for people who are not on the autism spectrum. From birth and throughout life, music should be part of the life of all children of any ability, typical or diagnosed. If talent and excellent skills are evident in the child of any diagnosis, as well as a typically functioning child, proceed to a possible professional life in music. Finally, kids in music means thinking beyond the spectrum and ensuring that music is part of all children's lives throughout life. To quote the philosopher Frederick Nietzsche, without music, life would be a mistake. To quote Plato, music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination and life to everything. And finally, to quote Oliver Sacks, the power of music to integrate and cure is quite fundamental. It is the profoundest non-chemical medication. So in addition to making an argument for why music education is important, she also offers many practical tips for parents and teachers on how the best practices for teaching music to children on the autism spectrum. We'll now hear from our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Um Sunday, May 16th, there is going to be this uh, ninth annual autism awareness car show uh, taking place at 1210 S Cherokee Lane, uh, C-H-E-R-O-K-E-E -E -E in Lodi, California, 95240. And it's a Smackdown autism, I don't know why they call it that, um, but it's an autism Having Autism With Us proceeds benefits laying the smackdown on autism open to all um, makes and models. Um, and it looks like, yeah, it's an annual thing. And I, this is the first time I've heard of it. And it'll be happening in Lodi uh, starting at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Sunday, May 16th. And uh, tickets look like they are $25. So, um, and then uh, Saturday, May 22nd, uh, starting at 9.30 a.m., there's this uh, place called ACES Center. And ACES actually is located in other places like Concord, San Bruno. This ACES I'm talking about is in, um, in San Jose um, on Monterey Road, 1887 Monterey Road. And there's supposed to be a fun in the sun type of event, uh, carnival, entertainment, and um, clients of all ages and abilities um, are, are welcomed and to socialize, engage in, 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 um, in other like curriculums and stuff like that. And so um, clients, um, you know, it's preferred that they are with their supervisors or so. Um, so, but it, it, apparently this, it sounds like it's open like for anybody. So um, that is all my, that's all I have to share today. And thank you. Well, folks, uh, that's this week's program for Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burdick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm Jennifer Brooks. I'm Ryan Berman. I'm Michelle Hecht. Until next time, stay well and stay safe. Mm -hmm.